Welcome to Tales from the Fandom, a podcast that brings a special guest out of the multiverse and straight to you. And now your host, David Ginsberg. Welcome to Tales from the Fandom, the podcast that offers a unique take on fandoms with a variety of guests. Our guest today is Ginny. However, she is not a Weasley, just straight up Ginny. Ginny started cosplaying four years ago with her now husband. Her fandoms range from Scott Pilgrim to Harry Potter and Doctor Who, just to name a few. She teaches elementary school in the San Francisco Bay Area and leads a nerd-centric life. But when she's not nerding out, she loves to cook, bake, she does yoga, she reads, and watches Netflix. And I mean, who doesn't at this point? Welcome to Tales from the Fandom, Ginny. Thanks for having me, David. Oh, it is my pleasure. So what is fandom? How would you describe fandom? Um, to me, I would say fandom is just the love and passion for any topic or series or franchise. And it's just so much more than just a casual enjoyment of something. It's that being fully immersed in it. So it's getting excited whenever you're exposed to any little bit from the fandom. And it's knowing as much as you can about it and just always wanting more of it. So that's kind of how I view fandom. And what fandoms are you into? What What's the, the big draws for you? There's actually a lot. I'm one of those people who, when I get into something, I really get into it. Um, I would say the biggest one for me is definitely Disney. Um, it's been a part of my life for forever. But I also um, completely love Doctor Who, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Star Wars. There's just a whole lot that I really and truly love where if I see something about it or I, you know, come across an episode randomly, I get excited and I get drawn back into it. Um, but there's definitely many, many more that I just have that more casual interest in as well. Right. Now, when I was looking for guests, I found you on Instagram and you are under Ginny Not Weasley Cosplay. And what drew me to you is your assortment of fandoms that you represent in your cosplay. Um, outfits that you do yeah i i mean it started off originally i started out with uh ramona flowers from scott pilgrim versus the world because um when my husband and i were dating we actually went to kamikaze and we wanted to cosplay um and it was just one of those that was his favorite movie and i thought well what a great thing for us to do together so i kind of threw one together and it's made its evolution throughout the years and i finally got into my final form for her and i'm really proud of that cosplay but then I just started branching out into many different things that held a special place in my heart. So I have a lot of Disney. Um, this summer I'm planning on branching out into Star Wars and Game of Thrones. And um, I have some Sailor Moon in there as well. So it's just a lot of kind of like a whole collection of things that I love. And that's how I pick my cosplay. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm really appreciative of the people that when they do the cosplay that they are invested in what they're doing rather than just putting on an outfit and going to the convention or taking pictures. Um, as far as Disney goes, is there any particular Disney movies or shows that you like or that you are a big fan of? I mean, I'm, I'm a, definitely a Disney person. So almost anything I love, but I would say my top ones are Beauty and the Beast. I, adore Belle. I love that she's smart and that she reads and she's brave and kind. Um, and I love Ariel and the Little Mermaid. I was definitely that child who, if there was a rock and I was at the beach, I did like the whole part, part of your world pose. Um, <laughs> so I think those are my definitely top two, but I just, I think Disney is such a wonderful and expansive thing that it teaches so many great life lessons and it just kind of transports you away from you know, the doldrums of being an adult and living re your regular life. It's just a great fantasy world. Exactly. And with Beauty and the Beast, there's the new movie coming out with Emma Watson as Belle. What do you think about that? I am ridiculously excited. I, I was actually joking with one of my teacher friends the other day at work because she knows that I cosplay as Belle and she was like, the only other person who we'd be happy with playing Belle in that movie would be you because... <laughs> You are Belle, but um, we were we're really excited about having Emma Watson play that role. I think she's going to do phenomenally. I think she's a brilliant actress and human being, and I just think she's a really great casting choice. And I can't wait for it to come out. 
Me neither. I was when the trailer came out, I was so ready to see something, anything, and then just they didn't show but just the the flower and that was it. You get a tiny glimpse of her and I was like that was enough for to get me excited. So, it was great. So, you like Disney, you like uh, Beauty and the Beast, you like Little Mermaid, and you do cosplays, both of them. Yes. Uh, which one do you like to do more, Ooh. like, uh, to be? That's a really hard one because I I love them both so much. Um, I really like to be Belle just because I get to use my own hair, which is really nice. Um, you know, it's I feel like I connect with her a little bit more, but... It's so much fun to be Ariel, and I think I might be a little more biased towards her because I have a easier um, couples cosplay that I can do. I can definitely coerce my husband to be Prince Eric for me, but he's not so much into being the Beast for my Belle, so... Yeah, that would be a, a pretty hardcore costume as far as being the Beast goes before he turns into a uh, Adam. Yeah, it would definitely be a challenge, and I think it's beyond my cosplay capabilities, so I'll settle for getting to do couple cosplay with Ariel and Eric, but just uh, going solo for Belle. Is there any um, Disney character that you haven't cosplayed as that you want to in the future? Ooh, um, I would actually love to do Mary Poppins. I think she'd be a lot of fun to do. Um, I'd also love to do Tinkerbell and um, Rapunzel. I'm just trying to figure out if I can pull off blonde. So that's, mm. that's the challenge. But um, I mean, any of those would be wonderful and so fun to do. Okay. When you cosplay, do you get into being the character or do you, when you go to the conventions, are you more just walking around with uh, the cosplay on? Um, I mostly walk around. I mean, I definitely get in character for if I'm getting my picture taken and I'm definitely in character if, um, especially when little kids come up to me and they think I am that character. And I actually, I worked at Disneyland in college, so I had a lot of exposure to how you're supposed to act when you're around kids as far as as a character. And it was just one of those, like, if I have a little girl come up to me thinking I'm Belle, I will be Belle for her kind of thing, just because I don't want to break that illusion and I don't want her to have a negative, you know, a negative bias towards it and, you know, break that magic. Absolutely. I think that's probably like the common thread that I've seen uh, especially with people that do cosplay as Disney characters or characters from uh, kids kids movies or kids literature is that they're very respectful of keeping that um, facade so that way they're not breaking um, what the kids are seeing yeah it's just it, I think it's really important to me and it's just I I really, I'm really glad that there are so many cosplayers who do the same thing and just go with it because there are so many, especially as, sorry, I'm going all over myself, um, but especially as like nerd culture is getting more and more prevalent and families are bringing their kids to these conventions and everything, like you see more and more children and you just want to make sure that they are enjoying it and they are caught up in this world as much as you are. And I think what better way to do that than to just encourage to stay in character when you need to and, you know, encourage their love for the fandom as well. That's absolutely right. I I went to my first convention a couple weeks ago and I didn't bring my kids with me, but I think the next convention that I go to, I will bring them and I'm hopeful that they'll get as much out of it as I got out of it when I went. I hope so. I think that's like one of my fears uh, for when I do someday have children. It's that what if they are not into the nerd scene as much as I am and my husband is. So I really hope that I can instill that in them and that they enjoy it as much as we do. Let me tell you, it is hard. I try to sit my kids down. They're seven and twin six-year-olds. Okay. And... I said, hey, you know, let's watch Star Wars, the original Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And my kids kind of uh, made it the first 20 minutes or so, and then they were done because there was no lightsabers. There were no Jedi running around fighting with lightsabers. And clearly they've been influenced more by the, the TV shows like uh, Star Wars Rebels, where there's action every two to three minutes. But I think hopefully as they get older, they'll get into it more. Hopefully. I mean, it's, it'd be a shame if they were not a 
into Star Wars because it's just such an amazing franchise. And I hope that they, they can appreciate the, the original, you know, for the amazingness that it is. Absolutely. I, I just hope. I, I can't have kids that aren't into the things that I'm into. I need them to be into it. I completely understand. <laughs> so apart from Disney, you are also into the show that has really brought a lot of people that weren't into fantasy into the fantasy world with Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> the season that's going on now it has been, to me, fantastic. I've, I've absolutely loved it. I think it's been so rewarding as a fan to see so many good things, except I'm getting really wary that something really bad is going to happen because, you know, it's Game of Thrones. But I, I've been loving it. And we are now in mostly uncharted territory since he, uh, they've surpassed George R. R. Martin's books. But who who's your favorite character in the show or in the books? Because, you know, there is the overlap of characters. It's really hard. I'm a really indecisive person. I can't ever pick just one. Um, but I I love Daenerys. I think that she's just fantastic and, you know, completely amazing and so strong, such a strong woman. Um, but I also have really come to appreciate Sansa. I think that she's done so much especially in the show, um, because I know it's different in the books. Um, it, she's done so much just to survive, and I think that that will is just so strong, and I love it. Um, I mean, I love Tyrion. He's just hilarious and so witty, and I just, I love Jon Snow and his his honor. It just, he definitely has that going for him. He's a true Stark, even if he's a Snow. Oh, Absolutely. And I've heard that um, about Sansa a lot in this season where it's finally coming to fruition of Sansa's evolution from the Stark girl in Winterfell and her journey to King's Landing and everything that she's gone through since. It's finally six seasons now paying off into such a more dynamic character than what she started as. For sure. I mean, I couldn't stand her when I first started the series. Even it didn't matter if it was in the books or in the show. I just, I couldn't stand her. And it took me probably until I want to say last season to really, really care about her and really like admire her strength and her tenacity. Who would you love to see at the end of the se the series be on the Iron Throne? Ooh. I'm going to say Jon Snow. I think it'd be really epic for Danny, but I feel that he would be a more just ruler. So I'm going to I'm going to go with Jon Snow cuz I I definitely hold that fan theory um that he is a Targaryen as well. So uh -huh. I I think that he should be on the Iron Throne. Do you I I was talking to a friend of mine a couple days ago and we were talking about Daenerys and we were talking about something that had come up on the internet where people said Daenerys only knows how to conquer, but she doesn't know how to rule. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I would say she definitely, she can rouse an army and she can conquer places, but I don't think that she is a particularly strong leader. I think she has a lot to learn. I think that with help, she could definitely become a strong leader, but I feel like at this point, she has a lot of growing to do. Right. What is, who is one character that you think is underrated, that you love, but maybe the rest of the fandom, the Game of Thrones fandom, isn't really in tune with? That's really tough. Because um, I think that the majority of mine are kind of like up on that, you know, the, like the mainstream yeah. characters. Yeah, so I would. I really like, I really like Brienne of Tarth. I think that she's just such a strong, powerful woman, and I think that she works incredibly hard. So I think that she's really underrated because she isn't one of the people who, you know, looks beautiful all the time and you know, does like the more ladylike things. And mm -hmm. She's not like Arya who has her vendettas. I think that she's just a really strong character, and I really admire her for that. 
for me, it's always been, uh, and I, he's more of a, he's gotten to be more of a main character, but I've really loved uh, Sam. Yes. Sam was always my my guy. He's, I was really happy he had his moment a couple of weeks back. I, he's, he's another one that's really a great character. Yes. And I have to give it to the, uh, the character actors that are in the Night's Watch, especially like characters like Dolores Ed, mm -hmm. where he's been around six seasons. You see him, you recognize his face and you're like, okay, I remember that guy. He's like Jon Snow's buddy, but it's nice to see those characters that have been around for that long get to have their moments and their times in the sun. Exactly. It's it's a really nice payoff for them. And like, especially because they have just been, you know, sticking through it all through all of the things that Game of Thrones puts them through. Oh, absolutely. Now, there is one show that you watch um, that I have never seen before. And I don't know where to start with it. So I'm going to let you tell me how to get into it and that is doctor who oh my gosh okay i so i actually was not a big doctor who fan probably until about i want to say three years ago maybe four um and i tried to get into it because i was like oh it's you know sci-fi it's that nerdy kind of stuff that i like and a friend of mine actually had me come over to her house and we watched one episode out of order and it got me hooked. It was the episode called Blink, and it's with the Weeping Angels, with, okay. um, David Tennant's Doctor. And it's a phenomenal episode. It's like, it has the right amount of creepiness and the right amount of paranormal that it's just, it hooks you. And from then I went back and restarted the series at, um, not the beginning beginning, but at the reboot. Um, so the, um, oh, of course his name is the ninth Doctor, Christopher Eccleston. That's who he is. Um, his season and I started there and it's definitely a little bit campy but it's just a phenomenal show that it's so iconic because it's been around so long mm -hmm. but at the same time it's just it deals with so many themes there's just there's love and loss and friendship and just so much that goes into it and that each doctor just brings such a phenomenal you know piece into the show because he, it changes every few seasons. So the Time Lords don't actually, they don't die. Well, they do eventually, but they regenerate. So they become someone else um, when they get close to dying, which is why we're able to see so many actors play this role and play it so differently because with that regeneration, they have not only a new appearance, but new personalities, new likes, new dislikes, all of those things. And it's just, it's a great show. I, I mean, I would highly recommend it to anybody who's at all interested in the sci-fi world. All right. So the best thing to do for me and anyone else that hasn't seen it is to start primarily with the reboot and then move forward from there. Yeah, I would start, honestly, because if you are a person who gets irritated with poor special effects um, or over campiness, I would say start with the episode Blink. I'm not positive which season it's on, but it's during um, David Tennant's uh, reign as the doctor. And so I would start with that episode. And then once you're hooked, go back and start from um, the beginning of the reboot, just because I think that'll bring you in more and make you more invested in the show and the characters. Okay. What's your, or who I should say, is your favorite doctor? Oh, David Tennant. I adore him. I just, I, I love how he plays the doctor. He's just phenomenal and I have like a, a little baby crush on him. So it's, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's real bad. Like if he ever came to a convention in this area, I'm like, my husband already knows. It's like, I have to have tickets to that convention and I will pay for a photo op. I don't pay for photo ops, but I will do it because I love him that much. He is coming to a convention over here. Uh, I believe in the next couple months. <sighs> well, if only I could fly over there. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a long travel from California to Florida. Yeah, but I think he'll eventually make his way back over here. I I can't imagine that he wouldn't. I mean, it, California is a uh, the hub of uh, it's like the nerd mecca now. Yeah, well, I'm hoping he'll be at San Diego Comic Con because he um he actually is in uh, Jessica Jones too. So right, right, yes, hoping, that is correct. Hoping there'll be a panel that is not in Hall H, so I don't have to stand in line for two days but mm -hmm. right we'll see <laughs> all right so we've got 
Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. We've got Disney. We have Doctor Who. What is a fandom that you think that you're into that maybe not a lot of people are? Like, what's an underrated fandom? Like, one that you would love to get more people interested in? Um, I would say probably Buffy the Vampire Slayer, just because it has been kind of out of the limelight for a, a while since it's no longer on the air. Um, I think that one's definitely a show I would love more people to get into. And I, that was another one where I didn't get into it until after it was off the air. Okay. Um, a college roommate of mine, she loved Buffy. And so we watched all seven seasons throughout our freshman year of college. And it's, it was just one of those, it definitely, you know, caught my interest. And I'm, while I'm not as into it as I was then, just because, you know, I, I don't, I have all of these other things pulling my attention at the moment. It's just, it's something that's always stuck with me. And I think it's a really good show with really strong female characters and a lot of, um, real, again, really good life lessons. I think it's just a great show and Joss Whedon is phenomenal. So Right. I got into it when uh, it was season three and then primarily in season four when I'd moved away to college. And during that time, because it's back in the era of videotapes, mm -hmm. I had to make sure that I either didn't work or that if I was working, set it to record uh, 10 minutes before the show started and 10 minutes after. And if I happened to catch it live, no one was allowed to call or come over. <laughs> because it was that important. Oh, I completely understand. We had a strict rule when we watched Buffy. It was like one of one of our friends who watched it with us, her boyfriend would call and we'd tell her like, you can't answer the phone. Like you're not allowed to. I, we can definitely pause this DVD, but you're not allowed to. No, can't. Right. <laughs> who's, uh, who's your favorite character in Buffy? Ooh, um, I mean, I want, I want to say Buffy just because it's obligatory, but um, because I, I adore her. But I I really love Spike. He's hilarious to me and just so complicated. I think he's a lot of fun to watch, and I just I get really excited for all of his episodes. Okay, and he's had such dynamic uh, character development from season two into season seven and beyond. Yeah. It just, I think he changed a lot and it's just, he's fun to watch and he's gro he grows a lot through this series. Who do you like together as far as romantic pairings? Because as we know in Buffy, not every relationship works out. And so there's a lot of them. Yes. I, I am definitely a Buffy and Spike shipper. I, I believe they belong together, even though it's probably not in their best interest, but I love them together. Um, mm -hmm. I also really love Zan Xander and Anya. I think that they're just, they're so sweet and it's just so, their relationship is just so heartbreaking and I love them. Right. I, uh, I was a big, uh, Tara and Willow shipper and I always hoped that Xander and Buffy would get together and it came close a few times, but I, they just never pulled the trigger on it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think part of me wanted that but i feel that it just would have ruined a little bit of their friendship dynamic mm -hmm. so i'm kind of glad that they didn't but it would have been interesting to see now are you into all of joss whedon's work like angel and firefly or are you just strictly a buffy the vampire slayer fan um, i watched all of angel and firefly and i really i really enjoyed both of them um but i would say that it's definitely like i'm more invested in buffy but i i mean i love all that he does now you have also cosplayed as a sailor scout yes was that something was sailor moon something that you watched when you were younger or was it something that it, you got into later on in like your teen years um it was definitely something i watched when i was younger i vividly remember coming home from school and i was probably in like kindergarten or first grade when it aired over here and i remember watching it and i remember my mom didn't understand why i was watching it but she just let it happen and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and it was one of those like i watched it then and then it kind of fell to the background and it wasn't until the re-release um with sailor moon crystal that i started getting 
more into it again. And I'm a few episodes behind, but it's definitely something that I've enjoyed watching since they revamped it. I watched it when it came over. Um, I actually had friends that had the Japanese versions uh, with the subtitles way back in the day, as if I'm dating myself now. <laughs> and so I was I was very much into it when it uh, when it was showing and coming out in America. And I watched the live action version that they did a couple years ago, uh, probably eight or nine at this point, maybe even ten years ago. They did the live action version in Japan, mm -hmm. but I have not seen Crystal yet. Crystal's really good. I think it cuts out a lot of the, a little bit more mundane parts of it, which mm -hmm. is like both good and bad. It's it's nice because you get a lot more of the action and a lot more, you know, it's more streamlined. But I feel that you kind of miss a little bit out of like their everyday life. Um, right. But I think they did a really nice job um, with it. Um, it's actually one of the few anime that I will watch that I have to read subtitles. For some reason, I can't. Like, I just, there's like a mental block. <laughs> so <laughs> I, it's, that's one of the very few that I will watch with subtitles. So it's, it's pretty good. Now you cosplay as Sailor Jupiter. Yes. Is she your favorite character? I I really do love her. I I I don't know if it's because I'm partial because she's brunette and so am I. Mm -hmm. That's usually how a lot of my character decisions go because I'm like, oh, I look like them. That's great. Um, but I I think she's a lot of fun. Um, I would definitely consider cosplaying as different Sailor Scouts as well, but. I think I was just drawn to her because it's like she is romantic and she is strong and those are both things that I think I like to think that I am so it's fun to get to be her. Okay which uh, Sailor Scout if you weren't Jupiter would you try to do next? I think I'd like to try um, Sailor Venus. I again don't know if I can pull off the blonde it's it's the bane of my existence um, but I think she'd be a lot of fun to be. With uh, when it when it comes to Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon's been around for such a long period of time, and you always see Sailor Scouts at conventions. Mm -hmm. Is that something where you feel more connected to people when you're there dressed as uh, Sailor Jupiter, and you're with at the convention and you see the ten, fifteen, twenty other Sailor Scouts? Is that, I mean, that's got to be an instant connection, instant like hey, let's talk and hang out kind of moment. Is that something that draws you to, um, like, when you do your cosplays? Um, I mean, I enjoy it. I think it's really cool to have that, like, little brief moment as you pass someone on the show floor who's in your same fandom universe, and it's like, oh, hey, like, I, I got you. Like, I see you. That's really, like, it's a lot of fun to have those little, like, baby connections. And I, I enjoy getting to do things like I've stumbled upon Sailor Scout meetups and they actually the only Sailor Scout that wasn't there was Jupiter so it was perfect and I was able to be the, the sole Jupiter in the meetup um, right so it's like that's really cool to have that sense of connection um I think for me like a lot of my block is just because I am very much an introvert in real life so it's it's that like having that courage to go up and talk to people and be like oh hey you like this too do you want to talk about it just because I don't typically go and do those kinds of things. I'm very, like, I keep to myself and I'll smile at people, but I don't really start strike up conversations. When people come up and ask for your picture, is it something where you it's like automatic, I'll take the picture, or do you sometimes want to be left alone? Um, for the most part, I am always game. Like, as long as people ask me, that's my only thing. Um, if, you, if anybody comes up to me and asks for a photo, I will be more than happy to take it. It's just, I've had a couple instances where I've had people who are not so nice about it and just been like, hey, I need your picture. And it's like, well, if you ask me, I'd be more than happy to. But, you know, it's like, I don't want to be told I have to have my picture taken. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, again, like, as long as people polite, are polite about it, I am always game. Like, I think the only time is like, if I'm, you know, shoving food in my face I'd probably be like hey hold on just one second so I like look semi put together right I saw a uh, picture after my convention and it had somebody sitting on the floor and they said if you're sitting on the floor that means that there's no pictures 
Oh, interesting. Just because they're sitting, they're tired, either their feet hurt or they're just relaxing and taking a break from everything. So they just kind of crashed down on the floor somewhere. And for them, it was just like, no more pictures for right now. They're, they got to do their own thing. How do you handle the shoes? Because I've, I've got to ask Ooh. with with like, especially with Sailor Jupiter. Hers are rough. Hers are really rough because I actually found those boots at a, I want to say it was a Salvation Army and they are half a size too small and I painted them. Ooh. Yeah, so it's it's a really rough day on the days I do Jupiter. Um, I usually pick those for more low key days. Um, we actually have a big anime convention here in, um, in San Jose that we can walk to from our house. And I usually will be like, no, we need to not walk on those days because it's just, it's really hard for me to go all day. Um, I'm not really a heels person anymore. Not like I was in my prime. Um, <laughs> but um, I do my best to honestly get whatever shoes are going to be the most comfortable. Like I, for Ramona Flowers, I have a pair of combat boots that I have insoles in and they're, you know, so broken in that they're really comfortable. I have, um, for Belle, like the flats I use that I teach in every single day. So they have to be comfortable, you know? So mm -hmm. I do what I can to try and make sure I'm comfortable as much as possible and try and avoid the cosplays where I have to be in uncomfortable shoes. Right. I, when I was at the convention, there was, I can't imagine after a day of walking around and ours is a pretty big convention of like the dealer room and the art artist alley just going up and down those many hours and then having to wear heels or boots or the costumes that are 20 or 30 pounds or restrictive just that whole time it's it boggles my mind it's it's a definitely like it should be a competition sport because it is it's brutal and it's so much fun and so worth it at the end of the day but like there are definitely days where i've come back to the hotel after a convention and I'm just, I am so wiped. Like I wake up at 5 a.m. and get ready to go to the convention and get to wait in lines for all those things. And then we go back to the hotel and I'm probably asleep by like 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Yeah, I don't know how how people do it, especially when they go to like the after parties afterwards or the the after events that they have sometimes. But it is it is more power to the people that do that. I agree. I am definitely not one of those people. I I am a very old soul and I really like to go to bed early. So <laughs> when I was on your Instagram, which is Ginny Not Weasley Cosplay, mm -hmm. it delighted me to see you as Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. Oh, thanks. <laughs> are you uh are you a big Hayao Miyazaki fan or is it just uh Kiki? Um, it's more of a recent development. I um started watching more of his movies um when i started dating my husband because he's very much into um japan and anime and all of those things like he he loves the studio ghibli movies and i started watching it and i really liked kiki i thought she was fun and cute and it just i really like her character and on top of that it was definitely a cosplay where i was like oh i get to be comfortable and <laughs> Absolutely. So I was like, yes, this will be it. And I actually ended up throwing her together in, I want to say, a day. Um, I'm really proud of that. So, What other uh, Ghibli movies have you watched besides Kiki? Oh, um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I've seen The Secret Life of Varietti. That was a really cute one. I'm trying to remember. What was the name of the last one he did? There's there's The Wind Rises. I think that, um, was, I think that was pretty right. recent. What's that? Was that the airplane one? Uh, I'm not too sure i haven't actually seen it okay. yet i think i definitely know i saw that one i'm pretty sure it was the wind rises um okay. and i actually saw one of his really early films i didn't even know that it was studio ghibli until i was an adult um but i used to watch it when i was a kid it was um little nemo in slumberland yes yes <laughs> and i i remember watching it and being terrified of it but um i realized you know probably about three years ago i was like oh I had no idea that was one of their movies. So those are the ones I have seen. I have a ton of them on my shelf of DVDs that I just haven't gotten to yet. Um, but I just, I love the artwork and I love all the music and you know, his, his stories are great. The two, the two that I'll recommend to you are Princess Mononoke. Yes, I've heard which definitely that. <laughs> excellent. And then the other one would be, uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. It's a big mouthful, and it's one of his earlier movies. 
it is uh, a fantastic like post-apocalyptic um world strong female character nausicaa and it only touches the surface of this uh of the source material that he pulls from mm -hmm. but it's a fantastic movie i will definitely look that up thank you oh you're quite welcome so we've covered a lot of um fandoms different fandoms that we've jumped around with uh, game of thrones and buffy uh, sailor moon doctor who is there something that i haven't touched on that you'd love to talk about um i mean i'm always game for harry potter but just because you know it's one of my other early fandoms that i love but um yeah that's pretty much covers just about all of them aside from harry potter <laughs> okay well let's talk about harry potter what house are you oh i I'm a very reluctant Hufflepuff. Reluctant, reluctant it, Hufflepuff. It Hufflepuff me, pride. I know. I, I really wanted to be Gryffindor for the longest time, and I was in denial when I first was sorted um, on Pottermore into Hufflepuff. But the more I think about it now, the more I'm like, yeah, I'm totally a Hufflepuff. Um, since I actually played a game with some of my teacher friends, and it was, you know, name, use one word to describe each person in the circle, and they got to me, and almost all of them were like, kind, just... I was like, oh, yep, I'm a Hufflepuff. Oh, man. I was a uh, Ravenclaw in my early years, but I am a very proud Hufflepuff now. You know, I think Hufflepuffs, I think we get a bad rap because people think that we're just lazy and unintelligent. And little do they know that we are just, we have a little bit of everything, but we're just good people. Exactly. Plus, we had Cedric Diggory in our house. No, right? Before he, you know, died and turned into, you know, Edward Cullen. True enough. <laughs> I'll take Cedric over Edward. Oh, for sure. I don't even want to don't even want to think about that franchise. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite book of the series? Oh, um, that's so hard. It's like picking a favorite child. Probably, I would say, um, I really enjoyed the Half Blood Prince. Okay. I I loved getting to know more about Snape and realizing more about him. I thought that it was heartbreaking. With oh, I really apologize for people who haven't read Harry Potter or seen it in all these years, but really you should know, spoiler alert, um, about Dumbledore. I just, I really enjoyed that story. And I actually also really enjoyed the seventh book, even though it was like the longest camping adventure of my life. <laughs> it sure was. Who, uh, who is your favorite character? I love Hermione. I, I definitely, I, I really like the smart bookwormy people because that was me and is me. So it's just, I love her. And the fact that she's played by Emma Watson, who's just wonderful, makes it even better. Is there a character that you think is underrated or underloved? Someone that's not appreciated that you're like, they really need to, to come out more and have more people support them? Oh, I mean, Neville definitely. But I think it's kind of turning around since we figured out that he got really attractive when he grew up. <laughs> um, so people are more on Team Neville now, but um, I think Ginny gets a really bad rap, and I'm not just saying it because she and I have the same name, but I think that she's a lot stronger than people think she is, and it's just, she gets a really bad rap, and I think there needs to be more love for Ginny. Do you, are you a, a Ginny and Harry? I, I like, I'm okay with that. I... I don't know if they're necessarily perfect for each other. I, I'm I'm more okay with that than I am Hermione or Ron because I, I have very strong opinions. I think she's too smart for him. So I know people probably hate me for that, I, but I, I'm i okay with Ginny and Harry. I, I will accept okay. it. Okay. And Ron and Hermione. Yeah. You, you would not have them together. I know that after a while, J.K. Rowling had come out and said that Hermione should probably have been with Harry, if anything. I think they would have been more compatible, but I also, mm -hmm. I feel like it's one of those, like, I think they just, none of those three should have ended up together just because they had, they went through so much together and there's such a strong friendship there that I feel that, like, even though it's great to, like, have really strong friendships in your relationship, it's, I feel that because it was at such a young age, I don't see it having been, like, an effective, lasting relationship. But I'm also kind of cynical, so... <laughs> Who would you have liked Hermione to end up with out of the characters that you've seen in the story? Oh, man. Like, would you have her with uh, Victor? No, no, no. That that would have been silly. I think she was too smart for Victor, too. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ship it just because he's really attractive now, but I'm going to say Neville. I think she would have done really well with Neville. But, you know, 
I think they would have gotten along really well. I think there's enough care there, and I think that he is smarter than he appears. Mm -hmm. um, he has a lot of great traits, so and he he got very attractive, so I will allow that. <laughs> I, I was always a Neville and Luna shipper. I can see that. I and see that. it killed it killed me when J.K. Rowling came out and said that uh, they would never have gotten together and that he ended up with uh, Hannah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm okay with Hannah just because we don't know enough about her. Absolutely. So, exactly correct. So I can't really, like, make a judgment, but I think that he and Luna would have been adorable. Yes, they, they would have been adorable. I mean... I I understand why that he would not have been with Luna, but it would have been nice. It would have been a nice little closure, and I think it would have made a lot of people happy. How do you feel about the uh, new movie coming out, the uh, Fantastic Beasts movie? I'm I'm not quite sure how I feel. I'm my initial reaction is I'm excited because I think that I I know it's more Wizarding World content, so that's something that'll draw me in. But I'm I think my worry is just that it's not. Even though it's the same universe, it's not going to captivate me the same way that Harry Potter did. Right. I was uh I wasn't thrilled with the uh, the trailers yet, but I'm sure there'll be something that pulls me in, and I'm I am looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to reading the uh, the play yes. uh, for what's coming out across the pond. Yes, I am very excited about that. I can't wait for that to come out. Is there? something that you would recommend to people that are into Harry like if if you're into Harry Potter like magic the supernatural mm -hmm. what would you recommend that's in a similar similar vein um there's a a young adult book series it's called um a great and terrible beauty and it takes place in Victorian England and it's by Libba Bray and it actually deals with um, these girls at this boarding school, and one of them discovers that she is actually like descendant from witches, and there's this whole magical world that they go into. And it's really intriguing because it's it has a lot to do with the magical world and the non-magical world and the consequences but you know for the actions that happen in each of them. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those I I actually read it in I want to say high school. And then I reread it in college, and I read it as an adult, and I just, it's a fun, captivating book series that just, if you like historical fiction, you like dealing with that, it's really a nice, easy, let's take a brain break from the real world kind of book where that draws you in. Right. How many books is it, do you know? It's three books. Okay, so not too heavy for those who are just looking for... A smaller book series to read yeah they're not too heavy they're not crazy long or anything they're i want probably a couple hundred pages uh maybe 300 pages tops per book um so they're not really dense it's again young adult book so it's not written in really heavy language and it's just it's a it's a fun good series so i would highly recommend that and what are you looking forward to on the horizon in the fandom the fandom worlds that you that you exist in What's uh What's next for you? I I don't really have any one thing. I I have I'm actually going to San Diego Comic Con again this summer, so I'm really excited to go there and just kind of fully immerse myself again and get to cosplay and see all of the new things that are coming out. So I'm really excited for all of that. I mean, I'm excited for Rebel One for Star Wars. Um, excited for the new season of Doctor Who, which is Peter Capaldi's last season excited to see next week's game of thrones i just i it's a good time to be a nerd right now absolutely it is uh it's a nice time everyone seems to be getting into the nerddom even though it's not really nerddom anymore but it is it is for us the ones that have been growing up in it and just we're adding new people that maybe weren't nerds but now they are exactly we're just gonna grow our ranks and take over the world that's that's our plan now for those of, who are listening and that would like to check you out uh i know that you have the instagram which is Ginny not weasley cosplay it's all one word is there anywhere else that they can follow you or find you? Um, yes, I also have a Facebook. Um, again, Ginny Not Weasley Cosplay. Um, those are actually broken up into separate words um, for Facebook. Um, and I also am hopefully, uh, assuming that I can get my act together, going to be starting a vlog series on YouTube. Uh, same handle, Ginny Not Weasley Cosplay, and hopefully I'll have content on there soon. When you do, please let me know, and I'll be happy to promote it on 
our Facebook site. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Not a problem. And I hopefully maybe uh, if you're up to it after the San Diego Comic-Con, I'd love to have you back just to discuss uh, what happened and what you saw there if you're up for it. Oh, I'd be more than happy to do that. Well, I am so happy that I got to talk to you tonight, Jenny. It's been my pleasure. Oh, it's been so much fun. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. Oh, well, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for listening to Tales from the Fandom podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes, uh, rate us, review us, leave us a comment, or you can send us an email at talesfromthefandom at gmail.com. And you can find us on Facebook at Tales from the Fandom. Thank you again, Ginny, for appearing. And for this episode, my name is David Ginsburg. Thank you for listening. Bye.